Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're talking about PlayStation 2, Nintendo Switch, Game Boy Advance, and Anne Burnick. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here talking about Game Boy Advance emulation on Windows, Mac, and Linux with Nano Boy Advance. Nano Boy Advanced version 1.6 just released. Now, Nano Boy Advance is free, it's open source, and I'll leave a link to it in the description below. I do recommend picking it up if you're into Game Boy Advance emulation. It's a newer emulator, but it's striving for emulation accuracy, and it's a very interesting one at that. Version 1.6 here adds a few very good features. You've now got the ability to select your game controller and remap your buttons. You can also directly load games right from zipped archives. Additionally, you can load games just by dragging and dropping the ROM file into the main window of the emulator. And they've also implemented save states. If you end up checking out Nano Boy Advance, the very first time you open it up here, it should ask you whether or not you want to use a BIOS file. If you use an actual GBA BIOS file, emulation will be a lot more accurate, or you can select no and choose a simulated BIOS file. And in terms of accuracy, Nano Boy Advance is targeting to be the most accurate Game Boy Advance emulator out there. They're trying to be perfectly cycle accurate. I'm really curious to see how this is going to shape up, but I'm glad to see them trying. Next up here, we're talking about PlayStation 2 emulation on PC with PCSX2. PCSX2 has been incredibly active lately, and there's some updates here that improve some game compatibility. To pick up the latest release of PCSX2, head to pcsx2.net slash downloads and scroll down to where you see the nightly builds. From here, pick up the latest version. At the time of filming, it's version 1.7.3208. In this version of PCSX2, we've got some fixes for the NTSCJ version of World Rally Championship. Mercenaries loses its half-pixel offset. There is the before, and well, there's the after. There's been a few visual burnout fixes, including full mip mapping, and they say now full mip mapping looks the exact same as the real hardware. And if you like to play Ace Combat 5, they've added in texture preload loading to improve performance. Next up here, we're talking about Nintendo Switch emulation on ARM64 Linux. This one is very interesting. It's called Horizon Linux, and what they've managed to do here is patch the ARM64 Linux kernel to run Nintendo Switch games natively. Now, it's pretty safe to say that this project is in very early stages of development, but if you wanted to check it out, I'll leave a link to this Reddit post in the description below, and I actually recommend checking it out. It's a pretty good read. At this point in time, Puyo Puyo Tetris is the only game that's running. It's also worth pointing out that this is running natively on the CPU. The GPU they're using is an emulation layer borrowed from Yuzu. It also appears the developer of this was not familiar with Skyline, didn't know that Skyline, the Nintendo Switch emulator for Android, actually existed. So there might actually be a chance for some cross-knowledge transfer. In fact, Bylaws, one of the main Skyline developers, says, please join our Discord. We would totally be up for discussions about a Linux port. Wouldn't that be something? Next up here, we're talking about Anne Burnick, and they just teased their brand new RG505 retro gaming handheld, and it appears to be running PlayStation 2 games. And also Genshin Impact, which I'm guessing is the Android version, considering it wasn't even in existence for the PS2. Anyways, I'll drop a link to this video in the description below in the event that you wanted to check out their teaser. In addition to that, another Inbrunic device leaked that's small like the MiU Mini. If you take a look here, it does have shoulder buttons on the back. It's got a very interesting form factor overall. I'm not certain I like those shoulder buttons, but we'll see how this thing is when it releases, if it releases. It's a very interesting concept so far. And unfortunately, like the 505, we don't have any firm detail as to what chip is going to be used in the device. I am hoping, though, for Ambernick's sake, they are priced relatively competitively, both the 505 and this new Mini one. I mean, the MiU Mini is priced extremely attractively. I don't want to say the retro gaming handheld market is flooded, but there are a ton of options out there, and it's getting extremely competitive. Anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point. All stuff and no fluff. Let me know your thoughts about anything we talked about today in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.